Hello viewers, welcome. I'm by the name of Nanyoko Mary, a teacher at Nambo Secondary and Vocational School. And I'm going to take you through East Africa for the 241 history. Uh, we are going to look at the early inter-Castrian kingdoms. The early inter-Castrian kingdoms. By the end of this lesson, you should have understood the meaning of inter-Castrian. We have to understand the different kingdoms that we are found within the Italacastrian kingdoms. You have to be able to list down these different kingdoms. Then through those kingdoms, we shall choose one who are the Tenguzi today. That will be our case study. We shall look at the Tenguzi, find out their origin. Who was the first ruler of the Tenguzi? How did they behave? Who are the Tenguzi basically? What do we know about them? Then we are going to start with the Italacastrian region. But the Interlacastrian region, meaning of Interlacastrian, it means the Great Lakes region of East Africa. And we basically use Uganda because it is where most of the Great Lakes of East Africa are tied together. We shall add Rwanda, Burundi, then we shall add the uh, our lake, Tanga, Nika. We shall have our Victoria, Gorge and Edward. We shall have that, Albert, Choga, Albert, uh, Victoria Nile. Then we shall have the Alberti Nile. That this area here, we basically term it as the Great Lakes because we are having different lakes. One, two, three, four, five, six lakes. This area is what we are calling the Interlacastrian region of East Africa. And they're telling us that before the Bantu migration, or before the migration of the early East African inhabitants, we had some people who were staying here. And that's why we are calling them the early Interlacastrian kingdoms, because we have the Interlacastrian kingdoms, but these ones are the early. Within the early, we have the Tenguzi, which was the first, and then we have the Batuese, which was the second. That the Batuese existed after the downfall of the Tembo, the Tembuzi. Later, within this area, because we've said the Nanbat were not here, we had these two. When the Batuese had taken over, that's when we see migrations coming by 1000 AD. The Bantu started migrating to East. Africa. And the text of the band that migrated, we have the Baganda, we have the Banyoro, we have the Bagishu, we have people from Karagwe, ETC. That after these people migrated, being the choice that we now have in the kingdom here, these kingdoms here led to the decline of the choice forming Bunyoro Kitara, hence leading to the decline of Bunyoro Kitara or the Chwezi and formation of powerful king domes. You're seeing a map there that here we have our Bunyoro being formed, here we have our Buganda, we have Busoga, we have um, Toro, we have Ankole, we have Karagwe, we have Bukoma, we have Budu, ETC. When you look at that map there, it shows you Kigezi, Ndusi, Bigo, Amwene, Bukoma, Kachibengo. All these kingdoms, Rwanda, Burundi, were formed in the Great Lakes, within these lakes here. That's why we are terming it as the Interlacastrian Kingdom. So our case study, as we're beginning, I say, our case study is going to be the Tembu, the Tembuzi. Who are the Tembuzi? Have you ever heard of the Tembuzi? Have you ever heard of people who disappear when they are knowing? I wish God had to create it be like that. That the Tembuzi were the first and the earliest inhabitants of East Africa. The Tembuzi, the Te, the Tembuzi. Who are these people? What do you know about the Tembuzi? The Tembuzi are the first inhabitants. Inhabitants.
capitals. That settled in our Great Lakes region here of East Africa. Who can give us the origin? Historians up to today still debate that their origin is not clear. However, it is based on myths. People do not have the exact, but just assume and have those myths that they follow. And some traditions, orally, when we look at oral history, that means it is stories that are given through the mouth. Mouth, stories, those are termed as oral traditions. That today traditions tell us that the Temuzi just fell, imagine, fell from heaven. If you are to wake up and someone falls from heaven and falls in your compound, would you remain there? Those are the Temuzi. They fell from heaven. This means that they were now termed as the demigods. Because whatever comes from God is God. That we don't give them a capital G because we are not sure if it is God sending them. So they are telling us that since they fell from heaven, they termed them as demigods. Why? They believe that these were next to God and they performed the miraculous. They had miraculous powers whereby they formed the miracles. They chose, sorry, the Temuzi who do not die, they just disappeared. Whether annoyed or tired of ruling, for them they could not die. Imagine you're talking to someone and this person chook, just disappears, that's the ghost, according to today's history. But back then, when the choice disappeared, someone would know either they were tired of ruling or they were annoyed. And when they disappeared, they would go back to heaven. Heaven. The Temuzi were the founders of Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, which falls under the Wachwezi, and they are also called the Arakama, which means the rulers. This is a simple introduction of who the Chwezi were. And now we are going to look at who the Chwezi were or who was the ruler. How did they rule? What, who were the different kings? How did the Chwezi decline? What led to the ending of the Temuzi Empire? Yeah. The Temuzi were led by Ruhanga, who they termed as, sorry, The Temuzi were led by the Temuzi were led by Ruhanga. Ruhanga was the creator who they termed as their god. Was the creator who was helped to rule. Who was helped to rule by his brother who was known as Incha. Incha was his brother. Ruhanga did not have children, but Incha, his brother, had children. And he had four sons. These four sons, the four sons, one was known as Kaintu, the second was known as Kairu, then we have Kahima, and then we have Kakama. These four sons were given powers from their uncle, who was Ruhanga, the creator, and the first ruler. We shall call him the first ruler. I'm putting this table here to simplify our work as you're reading your notes. That Ruhanga was the first, first ruler of the Chenguzi and the creator. They, termed, they were seeing him as their small god. Then we have Incha, who helped to rule the people within the Italacastrian region. Incha was the brother to Ruhanga, who had four sons, Kaintu, Kahima, Kairu, Kahima, and Kaka, Kakama. Kaintu did not have any powers, that he just disappeared and went back to heaven with his uncle. So he did, he went back, went with, to heaven with the Ruhanga. Kairu, who remained behind, remained as the ancestor for cultivators. Kahima was the ancestor for Hadzi men. Then Kakama 
remained to rule on behalf of his and his father who was in charge. Ruhanga and Kantu, having gone back to heaven, in charge disappearing, Kakama remained the ruler. When Kakama disappeared, when Kakama disappeared, he was succeeded by Baba. Baba ruled. When Baba died, or what we termed as disappearing, because we say the demigods and could just disappear. When Baba ruled and disappeared, he was succeeded by Mu Ko Mukongo. Mukongo having ruled also for some time, he also later disappeared and was succeeded by Ingo Zaki. Ingo Zaki got tired of ruling, also disappeared. What happened? Isaza. Isaza, having ruled the Temuzi, all the interlocustrian kingdoms, it had become too big that now they had to break down the kingdom into smaller units and they were termed as Sazas for effective administration. He was very good with rearing and cattle and he loved his cattle so, so much that he had to inspire Nyamionga. Nyami Yonga, who was the underground body, underground, underground god. Nyamionga loved so much to make sure that he connected the underground with the earth, that he came in and asked Isaza that they would have a blood pact together, that they would be as brothers joining the underground and the earthly world. Isaza having asked his chiefs, they did not accept it. They did not. They gave him, however, an idea that he would use the Bokoko, who was his gate keeper. He was the gate keeper. Bokoko may have a blood compact with Nyamionga. When Nyamionga found out that the, the agreement he had with his blood was not with Isaza the king, but just with the gatekeeper. He thought so hard. And guess what? This guy sent his daughter, who was known as Nyamio Nyamata. Nyamata came to Isaza's kingdom and behaved as if she had come to work for Isaza. Nyamata seduced the king and she got married to Isaza and they had a son who was known as I Sirumbi. Who was known as Isi Isimba, sorry. Who was known as Isi Isimba. Nyamata Isaza had a son who was known as Isiwa. When Isaza, how did Isaza find out about his son? When Nyamionga realized that Isaza loved his cattle, he had to take some of Isaza's cattle. When Isaza realized that part of his cattle was missing, this guy had to look for his cattle for the love he had. And he left Bubu, the gatekeeper, in charge of the kingdom of the Temuzi. When Isaza went looking for his cattle, Nyamionga, he reached Nyamionga's kingdom, where he found his cattle. And Nyamionga had told him that Nyamata was his daughter, and they had, or they were expecting, him, a son. When Isaza learned of the son, he decided to stay with the man of his child. Bukuku waited and waited and now realized that maybe Isaza had also disappeared like in Gozachi, Mukongo, Baba, Kakaman, Ncha and Ruhanga. He imposed himself as the new ruler of the Temuzi. 
When he came to himself as the ruler of the Chenguzi, he had his daughter who was called Nyamwiru. Nyamwiru. Nyamwiru and Isimwa gave birth to a son who was known as his son who was known as Karumbi Karumbi. When he gave birth to a son called Karumbi, Karumbi believed he had all the rights to take over his, his grandfather's kingdom because his grandfather was just a gatekeeper. And him, who was the son, who was the son to Isimwa, Isimwa was the son to Isaza. So he believed he had to be the one in the throne. What happened? Bukuku was speared to death by his own grandson, Karumbi, who became the first king of the Chwezi and later changed his name from Karumbi and named him Serefu Inda Hura. And that is why we look at Indahura. He changed the name of the Temuzi and named himself as the first ruler of the Chwezi. That's why we see that Indahura was now the first king of the Chwezi and Isaza is now seen as the last king. The last king of the Te Mbuzi because Karumbi was related to Bukuku the gatekeeper and also had some blood of kingship. So he formed his own kingdom, which was the Chwezi, and this kingdom lasted for from Chwezi kingdom lasted from 2050 to 1350 AD. The Tembuzi were cultivators and they majorly grew cereals. Also, husband, because we say Cairo was the leader or the ancestor for the cultivators and Kahima, the ancestor for the Hezi men. And that is how, or what we call, the origin of the Ten Mbu Zi, the Tegots. And now, we are going to summarize with our table for you on the screen, so that you can see the lineage of the Temuzi in summary. Ruhanga was the creator. He had a brother known as Nchia, who helped him rule. The brother did some work on earth. Four children. Kaitu, who disappeared. I will go back with Ruhanga to heaven. Kairu remained behind to promote cultivation. He's the ancestor. Whoever carries out agriculture, your ancestor is Kairu. Then Kahima remained behind to help the cultivators and, sorry, herdsmen and promote them. Then we have Kakama, who was succeeded by Baba Mkoko Zaki, and the last leader of the Tembuzi was Isaza, and the first leader of the Chwezi was Dakura. Please visit us on our website, Nambongo Secondary Vocational School.